This podcast is powered by The Plug. I'm your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco Madame, and I'm so excited to be here. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Hustle Bunny. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hustle Bunny. I'm your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco Madame, and we are here today with the beautiful, lovely, super talented Ro Love. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you. It's been such a long time since I've seen you. Yeah, it's beautiful to see you in person. <laughs> Thank you. I know it's like the same. I like follow you on social media, but that only right. does so much. We like the flesh. Well, welcome. Welcome. It's always a pleasure to have you around. So tell our listeners a little bit about who you are. So I am an artist here in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. I do large-scale paintings as well as commissioned work. I'm also a practitioner in body talk, body intuitive, and Reiki. Okay, very nice. And I feel like even before I knew who you were, the most memorable piece of artwork, of course, is the Marilyn Monroe Mm -hmm. on the side of La Boheme. And for those of you who don't know where that is, it's across the street from the convention center. Yeah, it's 14th and Stout. Yeah, 14th and Stout. And I feel like that is like a staple of downtown Denver. And then when I met you, I like felt like I just met like a celebrity. Because I was like, that is like one of the dopest pieces that I feel like I've seen, you know, and a lot of people see it. And, you know, they just kind of pass by it and they don't really think about it. They just know it's a dope ass piece. But yes. So for those of you, and then you've done a lot of memorable pieces. Yeah, I mean, that one definitely, I got super lucky on that piece. And it's been riding for years now. And it still is, people say, say that is a Denver staple. I'm very proud of that. Yeah, as you should be. And then I've seen your work in Femme Fatale for those of you who shop there, Mm -hmm. all those different lovely places. And I know you're like on all the different art shows that happen here and there. And you're a muralist, like my brother, a muralist, and you guys like know each other through passing. So Mm -hmm. small world, but great world. (laughs) So you said that you do body talk and Reiki. Mm -hmm. So kind of talk to our listeners about what that is. Kind of like explain. Sure. So body talk is explained as a consciousness healthcare modality. So Mm -hmm. utilizing Chinese medicine, Eastern medicines and philosophy to understand how the body is a physical manifestation of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of dis-ease and problems that happen in our bodies are usually just an expression of something that's happening mentally. Mm -hmm. So I got into that about seven years ago. I started going to a practitioner for body talk because I was trying to get sober, actually. About six years ago, I was an alcoholic and I wanted to get sober. And I went to this practitioner and it completely changed my life. So I would go once a month or so and then... Then I also was a labor doula. So I was assisting women through childbirth. I Mm -hmm. was assisting families through the birth process from conception all the way to, you know, having a toddler. So what I decided was that through all of my work receiving body talk that I wanted to be able to offer that in some way to my clients, my doula clients, because it can really be so helpful mentally in high stress situations or dealing with trauma or or worry, or just any kind of stressful situation. And so I started to take trainings. And first I took their access training, which is open for anybody who wants to take it. And I learned a lot even from that, which was like a day training. And then after that, I just, I really just like fell in love with it and just started pursuing it and took their foundations classes and then have gone to workshops, you know, in Miami where the founder has their home base there Mm -hmm. and just took off with it. So I've been involved in it, taken workshops and mentorships for six years and then just added on top of that. So even last weekend, I took my first Reiki training. So Reiki is very similar. The background of where it comes from is much different and it really is a blessing. So when you take the training or when you receive the Reiki session, it is a blessing. So you're being blessed. And I don't know where everyone's belief systems lie, but it basically it makes you remember your most greatest potential. 
So it's a gift. And, you know, I went to this lady a few weeks ago because my sister said, you know, there's this lady at least in Denver called For Heaven's Sakes. If you haven't been there, you should go because it's a metaphysical shop and they have, you know, tarot cards and crystals and all the amazing things that can really help ground you in this body. Um, But they also have people who come in and do like Reiki and psychics and things like that. And I went to this lady and I've gone to lots of different practitioners. I've had lots of sessions and healing sessions with people. And this lady was gifted. I mean, I I had one session with her and I met God. Literally, it was one of those times that changed my life where I'm like, okay, I need to learn from this person because this Mm -hmm. person has a gift that she gave to me that now I want to give to other people. So yeah, um, that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's like amazing, you know? And I feel, you know, uh, the natural healing, I feel like is best healing. Yeah. Have you always been a natural remedies person yeah. as far as like natural healing? You know, because uh, you did mention that you were trying to sober up. Was that hard doing the natural way? Or do you think it was better doing it the natural way instead of going into mm-hmm. like your traditional rehabilitation system where they just kind of flip? Flush you out. Yeah, well, I had done the traditional system okay. and it wasn't working, right? Well, I mean, it had its helpful moments, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like whole healing. You know, it, it could only do so much mm-hmm. before it was like a lot of the work was really inside Mm -hmm. that we, you know, our consciousness is really limited, especially with some of those modalities that I was searching for anything. I was really searching for anything. And it just came, it kept popping up. And I'm like, maybe I should listen to this, you know? And so I think that happens for a lot of people. I think they try traditional routes. I mean, I'll tell you a personal situation where after I bore my first or second child, I got postpartum depression really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And I was on medication for about two years. And I'm an artist, right? A super mm-hmm. creative person. During those two years, I did not paint or pick up a pencil and draw once. And I was fine. I felt like I could handle my days. It made me feel better in terms of like the depression that I felt, the deep, deep sadness that I felt. But it just kind of made me like gray. Like I I couldn't feel extreme sadness, but I also couldn't feel extreme joy and happiness. Right. So I was asking my doctor, like, how do I get off of this? Because this isn't really me. You know, Mm -hmm. this is, I'm not really being able to express myself and feel things as deeply as I know that I can. And they didn't have any tools for me. They said, you know, well, you can get off of it. We we can slowly wean you off this medicine. I was on um, sertraline. I think it was what what it was called. Zoloft. Yeah. Yeah. Very low dosage. But, you know, and I got off of it. But then I immediately was like, okay, uh, as a person who is an addictive person Mm -hmm. who comes from a family of addicts, I need more help. Right. And so they weren't able to offer me that help. And so I was really out there just searching for anything. But I did grow up a little bit more holistic than I feel like most people. My father was all in the organic food way, way, way before that was popular because we lived in Golden and my dad went to school at Naropa up in Boulder. And so he would shop at the organic food stores up in Boulder and bring that food to our home. So I feel really privileged to be able to have that experience. 911. What's your emergency? Yeah, somebody's just broke into my house. Okay, we'll get a unit over shortly. Okay, please hurry. Real quick, can you verify your race for us? I'm black. Actually, no, I'm I'm sorry, I'm white. I'm I'm full white. Okay, can you answer a few questions just to confirm? Okay. Okay, how do you feel about Black Lives Matter? All lives matter. Nice. Did OJ do it? F- yeah, he did it. Okay, who's the best boxer in the United States? Jake Paul. King of R&B. Justin Bieber. Okay, last question. Say ask. X. Oh, fuck. No. Hey. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you or your company are looking to jump into the podcast world, now is the time. The Plug Agency is here to connect you to the full power of podcasting. You just record and leave the rest to us. The people are listening and want to hear from you. Theplug-agency.com. That's theplug-agency.com. Click the link in the episode description for an exclusive offer. And so in a way, you know, we were learning about kind of alternative things 
before it became more mainstream. Yeah, that's very similar to how my parents raised me. My dad was like an alcoholic as well, too. He's been sober now for about four or five years. But the biggest thing was he was always big into like natural remedies, a lot of organic eating. He was very into like, your body is your temple, so treat it that way. You only get one. So we did do like a lot of organic eating as well, too. But he mostly grew his own food. So farming and things like that. So like a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, mostly vegetables, because fruits don't really grow well in Colorado. But you know, just like different things like that as well, too. So I feel like that's also my basis of being raised too. And I still probably only have the only like medicine I have in my house is maybe ibuprofen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's for like a really bad day. Right. You know, that's if I have like really heavy pain, like, you know, things that I can't control. But most Mm -hmm. of the times I I, like refuse to take medicine. Um, I recently had like a surgery, like an invasive surgery, and they put me on like three different pain pills. And I've never been able, like I've never taken pain pills, number one, you know, like they put me on like Oxy and like two other ones that I had to rotate every three hours for like all day. I felt so horrible. I was like, I felt like lethargic and moody. And I'm like, I don't know how people can do this. Like, I'm like, I could never, I could never live like this, you know? And like, same thing for my partner. He has ADD, but he refuses to take medicine. Yeah. You know, he like mm-hmm. doesn't, cause he took it one time and I saw him was the Adderall, I think, but you like get hyper-focused. But I think I saw him take it one time and his whole mood, he just went, like you said, he just went gray. He went from being like this, like really bubbly, outspoken personality, you know, Mm -hmm. he kind of runs around and like does 50 things at once. And he's Mm -hmm. like very, you know, funny and like joyful. And then like he took, I was like, dude, like what's wrong with you? He's like, yeah, I took like Adderall and like, I just, it wasn't like directly Adderall. It was like another form of it. I was like, dude, like you're freaking me out. Mm -hmm. Like, please don't take this. Like, I know it's supposed to help you or whatever, but like the person that I fell in love with wasn't this gray person. And I was like, okay, I, I completely understand now understand yeah. why you don't want to take it because it just kind of fucks you up yeah. you know and it doesn't feel good like to be mm-hmm. feeling like in a slum like no one should live like that yeah. you know so do you practice body talk mm-hmm. and reiki i want to keep saying body tapping but i know that's not well the tapping word. is a part of it okay it is. <laughs> okay <We tap. laughs> perfect all right so i know i was like headed in the right direction yeah, you were. um so with that like what does what would that entail so if mm-hmm. i wanted to book a session with you or yeah. if someone wanted to book a session with you what does that look like Yeah, so really anyone can come for a variety of reasons. It is to address mental, Mm -hmm. emotional, physical, and spiritual. So it's all of these different layers of us as human beings that it can address. And it can get real funky too. Some things, you know, the beautiful thing about the system and the structure is that I have knowledge, right? I have my experience that gives me knowledge, but no matter who you go to, which practitioner you go to typically the the same thing will come up even Mm -hmm. though those people don't even know each other because Mm -hmm. we are trained on how to listen to the body right right so we use muscle testing which is a very very great form um, once you know how to use it which is basically like your body and my body can communicate in a muscle testing way so i don't always use muscle testing it just depends on how well my body can understand and read your body and how well your body can read and understand my body so it's really interesting the whole realm of energetics is really interesting but basically when a person comes in I first of all as a practitioner and as a person who's going to be kind of like reading the messages from your body is I have to ask your body mind and spirit permission to even have a session because sometimes like even though you might say yeah I want this there might be something going on in your spirit or the karmic level that will say not at this time Mm -hmm. this is we can't do anything on this at this time. I mean, there's other things that we could do, but just to kind of give people feeling like they still have free will. Right, (laughs) right. You know, in in that energetic realm, because there's a lot we don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like opening us up as human beings to really level up with understanding consciousness. And so I tell people a lot of times in sessions, I'll do very, very traditional techniques, which is like hydration, for instance. 
Hydration is a body talk technique where you may or may not be actually absorbing the amount of water in your cells as you could at your highest potential. Okay. And so something could have just kind of like knocked you off a little bit. So um, I like to use analogies a lot. Like if you're driving and you hit your wheel on a curb and it knocks your, you know, your wheels out of alignment. That happens for us in our energetic level too. So for some reason, your hydration got knocked off by something. And so basically, we just do this little technique where we ask your cells to be able to absorb crystal clean water in a way that is to its most potential and kind of filter out any gunkiness that may have built up in there. That technique alone has changed so many people's lives. Yeah. Because we're mostly water, right? right. We know that. So right. like if we're not absorbing and flushing water and mm-hmm. filtering water as best as we could be, you could have a lot of issues because of that. So things like that. And then on the more spiritual level, I don't often talk about kind of psychic things that happen because it can freak people out. (laughs) But oftentimes people have these spirit guides or ancestors that want to give encouragement or if you've lost a loved one, um, sometimes they can kind of pop up in sessions and it might have like a message or something. So that, that can be really beautiful and healing for people. Sometimes these people might pop up, but the person who is receiving the session may not be consciously ready to understand that. So they can come into the session and have a message and I can kind of like relay that message through energetics for them without Mm -hmm. even having to talk to them. Um, But for the most part, especially the Reiki, I mean, belief systems change, like things that you've been working on that have been really traumatic, things that like seem cyclical that you're like, gosh, I wish I could get out of this. All of these kinds of things will shift no matter what. Like even with the Reiki, I mean, that to me is something that's really powerful and I feel so glad glad and so grateful that I can bring that into my community where you basically feel like all of a sudden you've got angels around you. You feel so light. You feel like all that heaviness got shook off and you just feel so good. Like you walk out of those sessions just like, oh my gosh, like I don't know what I was fretting about before. I don't Mm -hmm. know what I was worried about. You completely forget all of that. You just feel good. Yeah, no, that's like an amazing feeling, you know, and I feel like we all still have some muck Mm -hmm. Because like you said, everything changes every day. You Mm -hmm. might encounter something that you never thought you were going to encounter before, you know, so everything changes. And I think it is good to, like you said, start with just like drinking water. (laughs) Like that is like such a big thing, you know, like actually absorb it, actually appreciate it, you know, and I feel like that's such like a big thing. Yeah. You know, I try to practice Taoism. That's my go-to. I guess it's not really religion, but lifestyle choice that I decided to use. So I've been using that a lot and I feel already a difference because I feel like I like a lot of the books and I read, I guess you would call it like a passage. And I feel like when I read it on the day that I do read it, like Mm -hmm. I might not read every day, but on the day, like let's say I read like every third day or like sporadically, I feel like that's what I needed that day. Yeah, isn't you know it what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like it just feels good, right? Because you're yeah. like, okay, I read it. That's what I needed for that day. Mm-hmm. I didn't need this yesterday. I didn't need this last week. I needed that today. Yeah, you know, and it like feels good when you when you're like, okay, that's what I needed. That was like my motivation today. So, do you practice on yourself? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, body talk is a little bit more difficult to practice on yourself. So I still go and have sessions. And as somebody who's holding space for others, like you always should be having work done because um, because you got to we do we pick up stuff, and especially like if you're a sex worker, like this kind of work would be really, really helpful because, you know, a lot of jobs we interact with people who might bring in some bad energy or we might have a traumatic experience, right. you know, like with somebody who's aggressive especially with sex workers somebody who's aggressive who wants to take their anger out on you like having to take care of yourself to the nth degree treating yourself as if you are your you know your body is your temple your mind is your temple and it doesn't matter what your job is but if you're consistently taking care of yourself you'll always be fine you right. know you'll always be able to handle what the world has to offer you and if anything it teaches you how to process and react mm-hmm. to situations with an understanding you know yeah no that's 100 percent true because you know with doing sex work in itself which is just a whole that's like a whole show mm-hmm. with like mental health and sex work but yeah. um like i said like a lot of women and you know men sex workers as well they don't understand like you don't realize like
like the trauma that you go through until mm-hmm. you realize that it's happened. Because like sometimes like, okay, like that's just, that's normal. That's just another night at work. Right. You know, you're like, okay, whatever. It's expected. But you shouldn't have to expect to be treated like shit. Right. No one should expect to be treated like shit, whether you're a sex worker or not, mm-hmm. you know, because it's still work. It's still you're putting yourself out there. You're still coming to work. You're still doing a job. You're still mm-hmm. pr- you're providing a service. So to be treated like shit, right. you should never accept that. And that goes anywhere through life. No one right. should be able to treat you like shit. And like that should be the norm. Because right. if that's like your norm and your mindset, then you have like a lot of trauma, you know, like, OK, yeah. like that's normal. Like, no, it's not normal. Normal. And once you start to normalize it, it sucks. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. then that like sludge that's just like building up on the inside just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know? Then, you know, you build things like anxiety, you build things like trust issues, you get like a little, you know, like there's like everyone reacts differently. I can't say everyone's body, you know, how everyone works, but I can say what I went through right. as far as like the trauma mm-hmm. of some things that happened to you. And then you just feel like, oh shit, like, I, what, damn. I normalize Mm -hmm. that. So I internalize it. And now, like, that's my everyday state of mind, you know? And then I start to take that out on other people. Yeah. So it's rough out here. But you know what? I think, like, 2020 and being in quarantine and having to deal with oneself... I think a lot of people had to do that, like self-reflection, because you can't go out, you can't party, you can't just like callous over your problems. You know, you have to face them because like, what do you do? You're just going to sit here and you're going to have to look at your own self. And, you know, if you're by yourself, if you're with your partner or whomever roommates, you're with yourself. So you have to live within yourself and actually come to terms of like who you are and what you've been through. And working through that, I feel like it's a lot of work, but it's work that needs to be done. Because if not, you're just going to keep passing it down to, let's say, you know, you have a kid. You're just going to pass it down to your kids. Mm -hmm. You're going to pass it down to your friends. You're going to pass it down to every partner that you have. Like, all of your damage that you should be working on before you just go and create relationships with people. Um, So I feel like, yeah, the relationship within yourself should be number one priority. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have came across a couple of women who said that they were Reiki healers. Now... I know you said you do the thing to where you're like, okay, is our spirit going to match? Is we align? If not, like, you know, not right now. Now, and I never like to knock anybody, but one of the girls who had told me that she was a Reiki healer, I knew she was still very angry within herself. And I don't think she properly healed. So I don't like the fact that she was like trying to heal others. So if someone's looking for like, and I don't want to say real, but if someone's looking for like a actual... um, well-versed in healing yeah how would they kind of wean out Mm -hmm. what to look for i would definitely get referrals Mm -hmm. and look at referrals because that does happen a lot in the energy work field is that there may be a a whole lot of people out there who want to do the work right who have received the work who have felt the benefits of it and who want to take it on themselves but they themselves may not be at their highest potential Mm -hmm. and you know, people have several identities, if mm-hmm. you will, and they might be a great practitioner. Right. You know, they may be an excellent practitioner, but then, you know, be able to switch over to this other person. Mm-hmm. That can hold true. But yeah, I would say if you really want to find somebody who is legitimate, you know, go to those communities. For instance, the only reason that I'm a Reiki practitioner right now is because of somebody that I was referred to mm-hmm. through an organization, through a place that I knew was well respected and legitimate. So, you know, just kind of like look at it that way, kind of okay, like yeah. filter it that way. So, yeah. And sometimes that's kind of like hard, but like if you had a bad experience with Western medicine, you're looking for, you know, Eastern medicine doctor, you're going to go to the school, right? There's right school in denver you're going to make sure that you get the because there are a lot of chinese eastern medicine practitioners out there who really aren't taking like the easy route Mm -hmm. to be able to do the work and they're really not trained in you know what they should be trained in to be able to offer it to community so yeah i mean it's just like with anything you want to make sure that you're finding somebody who is well respected who Mm -hmm. you know you have read references you know that they're legitimate Nice. And if someone wants to book with you, 
How would they go about that? So right now I am booking sessions through Beloved Wellness. Okay. Um, so Beloved Tattoo Shop is a women-owned tattoo shop, and they are also practitioners. So they've taken their work and combined it. So this shop is beautiful. It's very femme forward. Right within their tattoo shop, they have a practitioner space, and they do yoga, and they offer all kinds of classes like this. They do cosmetic stuff there, too. They have people in there. So I am seeing clients there on Sunday evenings and Tuesday evenings. If those times don't work for you, then you can just reach out to me directly. So you can look at my Instagram, which is underscore grow love underscore. So I've got both my art and my energy work on there. I thought about separating them, but... I'm, okay. I'm a whole person. Yeah, so exactly. I'm like, I don't need, like I already have like four emails. Like I can't... I Like I could barely even manage my yeah. Instagram. Like I'm trying to get on Twitter too and it's like okay yeah no I feel like I'm on the same tip like I feel like ah like it's so stressful I'm like okay I guess I got to separate this this and this and the email and the Twitter it's just yeah, too much it's too much how people like maintain that and like they do like that is a full-time job I'm not here for it yeah. I cannot just be on my phone all day right I right. just cannot it's I just I have no inter- Snapchat Instagram Facebook Twitter no for right? what yeah, so <laughs> I even though like you may not be interested in my art or even though you may not be interested in the energetic such ses- you know offerings that i have like it's all there it's all on my instagram so well perfect well grow love it's always a pleasure we're gonna have to have you back because we're gonna have to do a whole session i want to do a full mental health thing yeah. for sex work or just people in general i know um you just overcame a huge hurdle in your life with the mm-hmm. uh, with the crush so that's we're gonna save that for another episode okay. but um it was a pleasure thank you so much <laughs> it was it. yes yes i appreciate you too and until next time you guys stay hustling my little bunnies and we'll chat soon mm-hmm.